2023, we're going to start uh, with the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And I hope you read to prepare for today. And I hope you will read to prepare for each week. Because what we're going to do is over the next five months, yes, I said five months. That's a, that's a long stretch of time. We're going to take this thing to spring. Um, we are going to be in the book of Revelation. And the reason is I've had several people request that we talk about this and we study this. And I, I'm guessing it's because of the world we've been living in maybe the last few years. Um, has got this on our mind, the end times and end things and last things. Uh, so... We are going to be looking at the book of Revelation, and, and the reason we are going to take it five months, that we take it slow, all right? We're, we want to do the best we can to cover uh, all that we can, um, but with that said, we're not going to cover all of it. And so you have a responsibility on your own, again, to read, in, to prepare for week to week, uh, and to, to study, okay? I have never taught uh, or preached the book of Revelation. Stay right now. Uh, I've never taught or preached it. I've used scripture from Revelation uh, in other series and, and, and referenced, but I've never taught or preached this book as we are going to walk through it this year. Um, we did walk through the book of Daniel a few years ago, if y'all remember that. The book of Daniel, which is kind of like uh, the Old Testament precursor for the book of Revelation. We're not going to cover everything. We're going to do our best. We're not going to cover everything. Uh, even as we give ourselves five months to get through this. So if you have any thoughts or questions about the book of Revelation as it relates to that, I want to give you my email address. It's very easy. It's dusty at depotchurch.com. Dusty at depotchurch.com. That is my email address. And so if there's something that you read or hear or have heard that might be confusing to you and you have a question about it, I want you to email me dusty at depotchurch.com because I'm sure there's other people in this room and in the room as we go five months, uh, people that come and go that are going to have the same question or concern as we read through the book of Revelation. Now, does that mean I'm going to email you straight back with the answer? No. I'm going to do my research, all right? And um, I don't know, pastors don't know everything about the Bible. Y'all are quiet. Y'all didn't think I knew everything about the Bible, did you? Okay. We don't know everything there is to know about the Bible and theology. We are learners too. So there may be questions. I say, well, you know what? I, I haven't thought about that. I, I, I don't know. But I know where to do the research. And I know the trustworthy um, things to read. And I will be glad to share with you trustworthy things to read where you can do your own research. Um, but if, other, if people have questions and concerns and thoughts, then I can raise them from here and say, oh, I won't call you out like you had a question, but there's been a question about this. And I'll be glad to share what I learned uh, with you guys. So, dusty at depotchurch.com. Write it down. It's, it's on the website and, and Facebook and everything else. And So get me there. Get me up there as we go through and you have questions. Uh, there are three very important things we need to start with, though, when it comes to the book of Revelation. Three very important things. Uh, I need you to know as we get started today, we're just going to do introduction stuff today. First, it is revelation, not revelations. Okay? That's very important. I know we're in Gaston County, we like, oh, Walmart, Walmarts. All right? It is revelation, not revelation. That's point number one. Very important. Second, the main point of the book of Revelation is Jesus. All right? Don't get confused. Don't get bogged down in all the other stuff that is going on. It's about Jesus. And that's what we need to stay focused on is Jesus. Because if we miss Jesus, then we miss all of it. All right? Jesus is in it. Okay? That's the second thing. Third, 
As Christians, there is nothing to fear in discussing the book of Revelation, end time, last things, eschatology. There's nothing to fear as Christians about this. Yeah. Don't be afraid. There is nothing to lose and everything to gain. The opposite is true, though, for non-Christians. All right? So don't be scared of the book of Revelation. Don't be scared of uh, end times, last things, and everything else that we talk about. Today, we are just going to look at the prologue and the greeting. Revelation 1, 1 through 8 is, is all we're doing today. Okay? Read for next week the rest of Revelation 1. Uh, chapter 1, okay? Revelation 1, 1 through 8. And we're going to discuss some introductory things as we go along. Y'all ready for this? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Because it's gonna, uh, this, this is an important book uh, biblically, and it is important that we know it and do our best to understand it, okay? So, Revelation 1, 1 through 8. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to present this revelation to his servant, John, who faithfully reported everything he saw. So we can trust in what is written here. Uh, he faithfully reported everything he saw. This is his report of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. God blesses the one who reads the words of his prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. All right? I think, I may be mistaken, but I think that in Scripture, this is the only time that um, it is said that by reading this Scripture, you are blessed, and by listening to the Scripture. But I don't, don't, uh, can't know that, but I think that's the case. This is the only time in Scripture that the promise is made. The Scripture is promised. Four. This letter is from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Going to be a lot of seven in, in, in Revelation. Why a lot of seven? Seven is completion. Seven we know biblically uh, is about the, the completion. So um, look for that. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come. From the sevenfold spirit before his throne. That is the Holy Spirit, the completeness of the Holy Spirit. And from Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness to these things, the first to rise from the dead, and the ruler of all the kings of the world. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. This is Jesus. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. There's the gospel, right? In the first four or five verses of Revelation, the gospel. He has made us a kingdom of priests for God as Father. All glory and power to Him forever and ever. Amen. I've always said amen as being, uh, and you hear me say it, may it be so, let it be so. But from what I understand here in Revelation, it's more than that. It is, yes, it will be so. When we see amen, yes, it will be so. Look, He comes with clouds of heaven and everyone will see Him. Upon His return, all will see Him. Even those who pierced him, who pierced him, we know uh, physically it was the Roman guards, but also the Jews, some Jews had a hand in that. And we have a hand in that as sinners. Yeah. And all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen, it will be so. Verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. And that's where we're going to end today. We're just going to talk about the introductory stuff. That's the prologue, and that's uh, John's greeting. Well, let's first talk about the word revelation, not revelations. Revelation, all right? And the word revelation means to unveil it means to unveil or uncover or to reveal. And, and we, the word apocalypsis, that sounds familiar, right? Apocalypsis is the Greek form of the word revelation. 
that sounds familiar to us because uh, when we think of well, there are movies and TV that are talking about the end of the world. It's the apocalypse, right? That is from the Greek form of Revelation. What's being revealed? If this is about uncovering and unveiling, uh, revealing, what is it that is being revealed? What is being revealed is the second coming of Christ and what that will be like. All right, we just come off the heels of the first advent, the first coming of Christ. Christ, and now we are discussing, I think that works good together, we are discussing the second coming of Christ and what that will be like. God reveals to Jesus, that you saw this little uh, train that happened here in Scripture, it said God reveals to Jesus, and Jesus reveals to an angel, and an angel reveals to John, which is the author of this book, these letters, this, this vision. Biblically, there are many, many, many prophecies that have come untrue. And so if there are many, many, many prophecies, and I'm going to talk about this towards the end, that have come true, that we know have come true in the Bible, then there's no reason for us not to believe that what we are going to read and study here in Revelation would not, would not come true. It's, it's going to happen. Amen. It's going to come true. All right? So that's what revelation, not revelations, means. And so, but I'm going to talk a few minutes about the author, which is John the Beloved. Most believe to be John the Beloved. The author is John. Uh, John the disciple, he was the one that was in Jesus' inner circle. He was one of the brothers that was called, uh, remember this, my favorite Christian band named Sons of Thunder. If you have a Christian rock band, that's got to be it. Sons of Thunder. Um, he was one of those brothers. He was... Present at the transfiguration uh, when Jesus had a conversation with Moses and Elijah. This is John the Apostle that Jesus loved who was writing this. The, the disciple was, that was at the foot of the cross. This is who the author is. Uh, Jesus asked John, the author of this, to take care of his mother from the cross. I read one commentary and I, 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 don't, I don't I don't go with this, but you know, it, it tells you how close they are because uh, it said, I, I, I read one comment that said it, it, this was Jesus' best friend. And I don't know if that's true. I don't think Jesus had BFFs. He had, he had, he had disciples and apostles. He had an inner circle. Maybe he did, uh, but they wanted to, they want us to know the closeness, the, the relationship that John had with Jesus. John is credited with writing not just the book of Revelation, but also the Gospel of John, right, in your Bibles. Uh, John 1, 2, and 3. And John is the only disciple other than Judas that is not martyred. Um, he is the last surviving disciple, probably around 90 years old, when this revelation comes to him. Now, this is not biblical, but Christian tradition says that uh, they tried to shut him up, just like the other disciples. They, they tried to shut him up, and he was dumped in a vat of boiling oil. And they were hoping that this would kill him and shut him up. And it would, imagine, that's a pretty painful death. And so he was dumped in it to end his voice, end his ministry, but he would not boil and so the next thing they had to do uh, was they, since they could not kill him, the next thing they did, they tried to silence him some more, so they exiled him to an island. And the island was called Patmos. This is where he wrote uh, and vi had these visions. Now, I don't want you guys to picture like the Bahamas <coughs> or a private island, okay? Don't, don't picture that when we think of the island of Patmos. This was not that. Uh, this was a rock. This was a cold, barren, windy rock. A rock where they sent their criminals um, and problems to fend for themselves. And Roman guards would only hang out to prevent escape. That was it. That's where they sent everybody. Fend for yourselves. It's kind of a Lord of the Flies kind of deal. Fend for yourselves. Good luck, criminals. As you imagine, there was a lot of death and Destruction going on on that nasty island. Okay, the only means of support for people that were 
exiled to that island. The only means of support were family and friends that would send things into them to them. Which, if you're wondering, in John's on this island, if you're wondering, well, how did he, uh, uh, you know, write all this down, or how did he survive and eat and that kind of stuff? Well, it was disciple, other disciples, and not the disciples, but other disciples of Jesus, uh, who, who knew him and loved him, that would send things to help him. Okay, so that was the only means of support that came from the outside. But John being John, he had a lot of lot of support and he was loved. And um, that's how he got these letters off the island into the hands of the churches as well. But listen, what I want you to hear with that is what the Romans tried to prevent and kill and actually boil, they could not. He was not alone on that island, nor was he silenced because even there, Jesus was with him. And even there... He would put together the book of Revelation. He would have the vision and put together the book of Revelation. And the vision that John is receiving is, I want you to hear this, it's not just futuristic for him then. It's not just futuristic, but it's also for him otherworldly. Like this is of the spiritual realm that he is receiving this vision of. Futuristic and of the spiritual realm. So, John had this monumental task of taking what he saw, futuristic stuff, spiritual stuff, and putting into words and describing things that had never been seen at the time that he uh, put this together. Okay, so imagine living in the 1800s, right? Um, pick a date, pick a year, it doesn't matter. Imagine living in the 1800s and being given a vision of a commercial airplane. All right? Think about, how, do this in your head, really, it's fun. Think about how you would describe that as a person living in the 1800s that have never seen a commercial airplane before. How would you put that into words? So this is, this is what I, I thought of, like, a giant bird with like two big eyes and then a lot of eyes down the side of its body and then it roared like a lion when it was in the sky and it soared overhead without flapping its wings and the sun shined off of it. I mean, imagine trying to describe something of the future and even more so, imagine trying to describe and put into words something of the spiritual realm. That is what John is Doing as he takes this vision and puts into words for us. Okay? So that's John the Beloved. When? There's always the question when you talk about end times, last things, eschatology. When? When is it going to happen? Ain't that the first thing you want to know? When? One of the. Tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we don't know the day or the time. Only the Father in heaven. One of the things we do when we study the book of Revelation, or any prophecy for that matter, is we want to figure out the day. And I think we do that because we ask, when is this going to take place? Because if I can know when it is, then I can be better prepared. All right? Yep. Is that why? If I know when it is, I can be better prepared. But I want you to know today, this is very important as we move through here. I want you to know about this. How about this? Let's be better prepared so that we don't have to worry about when. That's right. Okay? Let's be better prepared so that we don't have to worry about the when. Because we may or may not see the return of Jesus. But all of us here are going to see Jesus at some point. Okay? So let's be prepared for that. We just need to know this soon. Is that what I read in Scripture? Time is near. It said time is near. It said soon. We just need to know that. So let's be prepared so we don't have to worry about when. In verse 1 it says, events that will soon take place. This is translated in two different ways. One, it's going to start soon. And second, when it starts, it's going to move quick. All right? It's going to happen. All right? So we just need to know soon. Soon. 
And, and we've also got to remember when it comes to the question of when is that God is above time. He's the creator of time, right? He is above time. And so everything for him happens at once. It's past, present, and future all together, all happening at once. You say, how is that possible? I don't know. He's God. We aren't. We never will be. And if we begin to think we can understand these things, then that would make us God. But he is above time. He is not subject to it. We are. He is not. He is the creator. Past, present, future at all times. And in verse 8 it says, I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still come, to come, the Almighty One. And so God and Jesus have always been, and will, the Holy Spirit for that matter, have always been and will always be. And they see all at all times. I know, I understand, this is difficult for us to grasp, but it's what makes God, God. When it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It means, in the Greek, that's the first letter and the last letter of the alphabet. All right, so A to Z would be Alpha to Omega, the beginning and the end. It means that he got things started, right? We, we believe that, right? Amen. He's creator. He created the universe. We see it biblically in Genesis. We believe that he got things started. So guess what? The one who got things started will also end them. And so he is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He got it started. He will end it. And we also know that Jesus will be sent. He, he, he doesn't know the time, but God does. We don't know. But God does. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is with God. They see. They know. The hurt. The pain. The suffering that we see in our world today. And the, the entire part of creation that, that has happened over the many, many years. They, they see. But... God being God knows the right time for us when Jesus shall return. Now listen, I, 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 I'm going to close up here. And you guys can come back if you want to or not. That's just a little introductory, a little prologue uh, about uh, what we're going to be getting into the scripture. Again, I gave you my email that addressed us, the if you have any questions about today or what you read as we go along. But here, I, I want to go back to the thing I started with. We talked about prophecy. Jesus fulfilled at least 300 prophecies found in the Bible. That's a conservative number. At least 300 prophecies. There are some scholars that, that are, are, are close to 600 biblical. <coughs> Jesus fulfilled those. And, and prophecy is fulfilled throughout. And these are the things that have happened through the God-man. I call him the God-man. 100% God, 100% man, which is Jesus Christ. At least 300, maybe as much as 600 prophecies fulfilled in him. Which is, which is statistically uh, almost, almost impossible for one man to fulfill that many prophecies. Now... We know and believe that all these things have happened, don't we? Yeah. We know and believe that these prophecies that we read just now at Christmas, we read in Isaiah, these prophecies about the birth of Jesus, we believe that, right? That That's Jesus. We know and believe that these things have happened. So what makes us think that what we read in Revelation won't? That's right. It will. If we believe that what has happened is prophecy fulfilled, then what will happen will happen because it will be prophecy fulfilled. 
So there's a little bit about the author and the when that we don't know when. Some little introductory things. And and again, I encourage you guys to prayerfully study through the book of Revelation as we go together. Are any of you doing, uh, you don't have to raise your hand, I don't want to put you on the spot, but maybe reading through the Bible in a year? I don't want, if you're doing that, I don't want to take away from that, but I do want to add to it. So if you could work through Revelation, then maybe when you get to Revelation, you can get a couple, you know, some time off. Uh, read your Bible reading because you've only read it in, in, you know, in spring, for, uh, winter and spring. Okay, so let's read through it prayerfully and jot down notes. We've got these wonderful notebooks that are still out there at the Resource Center that you can grab and slide in your Bible. And as you are reading, you can write down questions and write down th- thoughts and notes. You can email those to me, okay? As we move through this together, I think it's important to study the book of Revelation. I think the time is now to study the book of Revelation. And I think many of us have uh, wanted to and have a lot of questions and thoughts about it in the days we live in. But I will say this. I am am trying to wrap things up. I will say this. We have been living in the last days since Jesus returned to heaven. Two thousand. We have been living in the end, the last days, the since Jesus has has been gone. Okay, but there is more to come, and that's going to be the unveiling, the 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 revealing that we're going to see. There is more ahead of us, and I echo again. I echo again to you guys. This is nothing to fear. When I was a kid. Um, I went to a very a charismatic church, um, somewhat. And in the charismatic uh, denomination, um, there's a lot of focus on end times and last time things. Almost, um, and this is another thing I would warn you about, is uh, don't get too heavily in, <laughs> into it. Okay, it's important, and we're going to study it. And we're, But again, I go back to, let's be prepared for Jesus. All right, but um, this, these churches that I went to were were very enthralled and almost consumed. That's the word I'm looking for. Consumed by last things, end times, and, and, and eschatology, almost to a point of putting fear into the people that heard the word, whether it be from the pulpit or or from uh, classes. Uh, y'all understand where I'm going? That is not the purpose of this. The purpose of this, again, is to see Jesus, to see Jesus, and to understand, and and to be prepared for the wind. Not trying to find the wind. The wind. So don't be don't be so consumed by all of it. Like we can be so consumed by all the nuts and bolts and, and things about. It's called dispensationalism. That's a big word. It's called dispensationalism. You ever seen the preacher on stage and they have like the timeline behind them and like this is definitely going to happen right here. Okay, that's dispensationalism. I don't want us to get too tied up in the nuts and bolts of the winds and where's and how's and who's and what's and what's and nots that we miss Jesus in this. Okay, we don't want to miss Jesus. It would be almost like we fuss about Christmas. We get so tied up in the nuts and bolts of Christmas, like everything else, right? The tree, the lights, the uh, family we got to go to, the fights we got to get into with the family, the, you know, all that stuff, right? That we miss Jesus at Christmas. It's the same thing here. Don't get tied up and consumed by all the nuts and bolts and things going on around that we forget and we miss Jesus. This book, just like the rest of the Bible, it's about him. <laughs> about who He is, what He has done for us, and that we get to be in eternity with Him. That's not scary, folks. That's rejoicing. That's joyful. And so that when we look at the end times, when we look at the last things, and we look at this vision that was received, 
Focus on Jesus. Focus on being prepared. And don't worry about all the nuts and bolts and the moving parts. We're going to talk about it. We're going to do our best to understand it. But see Jesus in the Scripture. Will you bow in prayer with me? <clears throat> Father God, we do. We thank you for the book of Revelation. We thank you for the unveiling, the reveal through this book. Father God, that we can see the signs of, and of the times and we live in a world that is that is dark and that is hurting and that is de de desperate in many cases. And so God, we ask that you would prepare us personally as Christians this new year to be with you. To just be with you, Lord. And then God, when you present opportunities, may we Take you to others. And so God, I pray that this year and as we study this very important book that we find in your, in your word, God, that we not be consumed, but we focus upon Jesus, that we love you and love others, and God, our, that our hearts are prepared for your coming, whenever that may be. Whether Jesus returns or we return to him sooner. So, Father God, as we stand and sing, I pray that if someone here that doesn't know your son Jesus, that they would today, that 2023 would be the life changing year for them. And God, for all of us, we make a lot of resolutions, God. But may number one on that list. be you. To spend time with you. To study. To be with other Christians in community. To serve. May that be our number one resolution this year. May God keep us on task. So Father God, we're standing, we're singing, we're worshiping you. We're we're, we're focused on your son, Jesus, God. And may we do that. May your Holy Spirit move. And may heart change happen here this morning as it needs to.